talk with your main chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's the local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. Real talk. And here we go. Here we go on this Monday. It is the 17th day of January 2022, the day we celebrate the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Welcome to Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. Very, very happy to be here on this day. You know, they say this is the, this is the day uh, uh, on, not a day off. Well, it's a day of service. So this show provides a service to you, the uh, listening audience. You know, we like to try to teach you some things as well as to entertain you as well. And very happy to have you with us. Gang's out here tonight, and uh, we are looking forward to another fine, fine broadcast. Now, uh, before you ask, uh, there are a number of ways you could get this fine piece of radio broadcasting. Let me lay them out for you. Of course, we are on Live and local right now, 91.7 on your FM dial here at WYXR. You can also hear us on the station website, which is WYXR.org. You can also catch us on the TuneIn app. Just put in the call letters of the station, WYXR, in the search and hit play, and you'll hear us crystal clearly. And we are on uh, this little thing we like to call Facebook Live. And as we are a podcast, uh, you can uh, catch us tomorrow uh, after they post the show. Sometime uh, tomorrow afternoon, we will be available on podcast platforms all over the country. So how about that? Uh, I think we have a pretty good show for you tonight. We're going to uh, dedicate it to um, kind of learning about uh, how we uh, train our next generation, so to speak. And we're also going to take a little trip uh, to our local uh, edition of what I like to call Hollywood. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, television and film uh, in the second half hour of the show. My guests tonight include Candace Tate. Uh, she is the program coordinator for a program called Next Memphis, uh, which works uh, through the Porter Leith Foundation and it works very closely with daycare and child care facilities so they can do what they need to do which is to help uh, formulate our young minds and start to uh, get our children on the right road. We are also going to talk with uh, Courtney Richardson a little bit later on. He is the marketing uh, director uh, for the Peer Power Foundation, which basically trains college-aged students to tutor and mentor high school students. At Next Generation, one step up, that's how you do it. And Courtney's gonna talk to us about Peer Power Foundation, uh, what they are doing and uh, what things look like as we get into 2022. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, a little bit later on, we're gonna have Lynn Sittler. She is the commissioner of the Memphis and Shelby County Television and Film Commission. And she's gonna talk to us about what is going on out on our streets and what we can expect to see in the television and movie world. Uh, as we represent Memphis, Tennessee. So looking forward uh, to all of that. Uh, most of you, uh, I'm pretty sure, probably had the day off today, but uh, uh, if you decided to give service back, of course, that is really the true meaning of this holiday. Uh, that is great, but if you didn't, uh, that's fine. I hope you got some rest and relaxation and are ready to move into another direction tomorrow. We are going to begin the show in just a minute, but before we do... We have to honor you. We have to celebrate you and your trip around the sun, as we all like to say. 
but we can't do the celebration of the birthdays until I say, hit it, Lola. Happy birthday! Yeah. It's your birthday, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. Happy birthday is going out to Mr. Rick Thompson. I know Rick Thompson. Happy birthday, Rick. Uh, also, Rosalind Gill uh, is a fan of the program. Uh, today is her birthday today. Happy birthday, Rosalind. LeBron J- Ron Jones, excuse me, it's your birthday today. Sabrina Livingston is celebrating a birthday, as is Stacy Hobson, Miss Stella Jones. Stephanie Glover is celebrating today. Angela Morris Hudson, it is your birthday. And uh, Fatima Valera Rice, it is your birthday. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Uh, I need to acknowledge a birthday from yesterday. Someone all of us know, if you uh, watch the television news, in particular on News Channel 3, yesterday was Stephanie Scurlock's birthday. Happy birthday to you, Stephanie, on yesterday. I'm sure you had a great day. And uh, last but not least, two of my cousins are celebrating birthdays on the same day, which is tomorrow. So happy upcoming birthday to Betty Jackson Salone and to Cousin Daisy Orr, both celebrating tomorrow. Happy birthday each and every one of you. I hope you celebrate it great on this day or whenever your birthday is. If you have a birthday in January, happy birthday to January babies. We appreciate you and we hope to be around next year as you celebrate another trip around the sun. Thank you, Lola. So as we uh, step into uh, some of the news and notes today, of course, uh, many people around the country uh, commemorating uh, the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which is uh, today. Uh, There were several marches uh, around the country uh, today. Um, and I guess my question to you is, you know, where are we as a, as a society? Have we, have we gotten any better? Uh, I think someone asked uh, his uh, oldest uh, son, uh, Martin III, what he thinks that his father would think about where things are in this country today in terms of race relations and other things. He said uh, he thinks his father would be a little disappointed as to where we are. What do you think about that? You know, I think we, we could do better. We could always do better. And as long as we strive in that direction, I think we will be okay. You didn't think that I was not going to talk about the uh, Omicron virus, did you? Uh, It is still um, pretty big um, around the country. Over 700,000 cases a day, 1,700 plus deaths nationally, hospitalizations on the rise. And yes, hospitals are, 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 are starting to bust at the seams a little bit. There might be an indication uh, that this variant has peaked a bit. Now, peaking doesn't mean that it is just going to just stop all of a sudden. It may have reached a crescendo as far as its elevation is concerned, uh, but it is going to have to come back down, and that is going to take a while. It's going to take a while for those numbers and those cases to come back down. But I will say this, uh, in particular, Shelby County, uh, cases of young people, uh, very young people, is troubling. Uh, the numbers are, are really, really high. And, um, you know, that that seems to be a bit of cause for concern. So uh, if you haven't vaccinated your young people, uh, please, please, please do so. If you are not vaccinated, you need to go get vaccinated. You need to go get uh, your boosters as well, because we are still dealing with a very real threat of all of this. And it does it not going to enter, uh, not going to end any time in the near future. But hopefully, we have reached a plateau where that will slowly start to decrease. We'll keep a very close eye on that. Uh, we're still seeing uh, anywhere between uh, two and three thousand new cases a day. Uh, so that's that's no joke. And uh, a lot of folks that I do know personally, and a lot of family members, uh, have uh, come down with the virus, and uh, they say it's it's no joke. So we're always looking out for you. Want to make sure that you're doing what you need to do to take care of yourself, your family, your friends, and those that you care about. Okay. Uh, I heard a very troubling statistic last week in reference to this is the 17th day of uh, the new year, and we have seen 14 homicides in the first 17 days of a new year. You know, we always, you know, say when we end the year in a certain way, we, we, we you know, we pray that things are going to start out fresh, new, and, and better. We've already seen, uh, you know, several children under the age of 18, 
I have died uh, at the hands of, uh, of others. Um, and uh, that, that, you know, that trend that seems to start to be picking up, uh, you know, again, we're not, we're not, we're not starting out in a very good, good way. And once again, you know, you have parents out here, you have groups and organizations out here. What is the answer? What is the solution? How do we fix it? How do we get these guns out of the hands of young people? And, and, you know, just folks with, you know, walking around or driving around with reckless abandon with uh, no regard to life. And speaking of that, uh, when we were uh, last uh, together, I told you that uh, there was a manhunt on for the individual who shot and killed uh, young Dolph. Well, since that, uh, that day, we have seen three arrests uh, now. Um, the, the man who was allegedly the one to uh, pull the trigger, 23 years old, he and an accomplice were found in Indiana, about 500 miles away. Uh, last week, uh, they are uh, both here in the Shelby County uh, awaiting a trial and what happens next. And there was also someone who actually was arrested uh, in December, but somehow has been connected to this, uh, this very sad uh, murder as well. So there are three people in custody uh, in relation to the young Dolph killing. So we will let the uh, legal process take its course and we will move forward from there. So, you know, we had this uh, big concern about the snow. All of us were talking about snow last week. And Saturday was a rainy day. And uh, what was going to come after that? It was going to turn into snow. And depending on where you were, you could have seen one to three inches. You might have seen two to four inches. Well, I don't know about you, but I didn't see a whole lot in my house. Lola, did you see a lot at your house? Okay, she was on the highway. Did you see a lot on the highway? On and off on the highway. Jack didn't see a whole lot either where, 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 where he was. So I think we got away clean with it. Not too bad. I mean, it was nice to look at, you know, on a Sunday morning. We saw, you know, whites on the roofs of the cars and on the roofs of your houses and things like that and grass. But uh, not too bad at all. Uh, so I'm going to segue and end this uh, segment by uh, heading into the sports uh, news. And, you know, there we, we talked about all the NFL coaching uh, openings. There are eight as of today. But uh, if you watched any of the wild card football action over the weekend and you notice on social media how very, very quiet it's been, this town in particular, you either have to be a Dallas Cowboys fan or a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Well, Dallas lost and Pittsburgh lost, so they're both out until next year. And there's a lot of rumbling about what's going on in Dallas about uh, some of the decision making and the play calling at the end there. Uh, could Mike McCarthy, uh, you know, be, be out as the Dallas, uh, head coach? Uh, I don't know. Jerry Jones is pretty upset about the whole thing yesterday, uh, but they're out. So, uh, better luck, uh, next year for you Dallas Cowboy fans. And, uh, and speaking of, uh, Pittsburgh, Ben Roethlisberger played his last game as an NFL, uh, veteran yesterday after 18 years in the league and two world championships, big Ben is hanging up his cleats. You'll see him in about five years uh, at the Hall of Fame ceremonies. So hats off and kudos to a very big, wonderful, uh, and successful football career for Big Ben. By the way, the Tigers lost uh, over the weekend as well. They had a double. Did you, if you saw that game, uh, they were beating ECU by a ton, double digits, and ended up losing by one. And uh, so that's, you know, they just completely collapsed, just blew up. Anyway. Uh, that's enough of that. So we are going to take our first break of the big broadcast. And when we come back, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk to Candace Tate from next Memphis. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. You know who you are. Our first break. We'll be right back. Candice, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So listen, we're in commercial break. And when we come back, you and I are going to chat, OK? OK, sounds All good. Right. Stand by. All right. Part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Rescue.
College is now accepting applications for the fall 2022 semester. Located in Holly Springs, Mississippi, and just minutes away from Memphis, Russ College offers degree programs in business, education, math, science, and much more. Call 662-252-8000, extension 4043, for more details. Russ College hosts its Spring High School Preview Day, February 16, 2022. For more information, it's on our website at russcollege.edu. Russ College, where tomorrow's leaders are students today. The University of Memphis is proud to be a founding partner of WYXR. They've recently been named an R1 institution by the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education, putting the U of M in the top tier of research universities nationally. This milestone solidifies the university as one of two flagship public institutions in Tennessee. More information at memphis.edu. The University of Memphis is proud to be a founding partner of WYXR. They have recently been named an R1 institution by the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education, putting the U of M in the top tier of research universities nationally. This milestone solidifies the university as one of the two flagship public institutions in Tennessee. More information at memphis.edu. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk on this Monday, the 17th day of January. I hope you had a, a good day. I hope you had a good weekend. And uh, we're going to start the week out in fine fashion. You know, there was a, a story um, that caught my uh, eye last week uh, about a program run through the Porter Leith uh, organization uh, called Next Memphis. And I thought it was uh, worth a an extended conversation. So I have invited as uh, our first guest tonight, Ms. Candace Tate. She is the program coordinator for Next Memphis. And Candace, first of all, Happy New Year. And thank you for coming on Real Talk Memphis. I appreciate it. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, again, share the word about Next Memphis. Absolutely that. So if, if you will, give us a little background on, on the organization uh, or uh, this program in particular. Uh, it is run through the Porter Leith uh, uh, Foundation and organization. And, 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 and tell us kind of um, uh, set it up for us as to into what Next Memphis is all about and what you all are trying to accomplish. Absolutely. So like you said, it's run under the Porter Leaf umbrella. Next mm -hmm. Memphis is an initiative. This is our, we're going into our third year. And what we do is we work with community child care centers, as well as this year, we are uh, expanding to work with family day homes as well. And we provide services that Porter Leaf has provided for years to support the child care centers and family day homes to bring that level of support and education and, so, and uh, learning environments up to a higher scale. So what we're able to do because Porter Leaf has a, a wide variety of uh, experts under their under their kit. Uh, we provide educational support as well as instructional coaching support. Those two supports directly help the teachers in those family day homes and child care centers to provide a higher level of um, expertise and instruction for their students. They're able to do behavioral coaching um, to guide uh, any children that might have behavioral issues to uh, a different uh, through Colonial to get them um, seen to kind of work out any kinks with them. We also provide facilities, maintenance and IT support. So if there is a center that needs to maybe order um, a large amount of supplies, but it's going to be higher to do it for, for themselves, we can bring in our vendors to do the ordering. So it's a little bit cheaper. We also provide HR support uh, so that if they're having issues with hiring or providing those yearly reviews, our team is able to come in and assist those directors and owners with that. Uh, we also provide data support. So mm -hmm. when our instructional coaches and educational specialists are doing the educational assessments, we can go back and show the teachers, the parents, the owners, directors, what it looks like for their child to receive this instruction, to get these assessments and how they improve. And we can track that through them uh, through kindergarten and then as they go through third grade. 
We yep. also offer, it's a lot. We also offer family support. So yeah. we will work, uh, so our family support specialists work with uh, the families to set goals and do a family ass assessment just to see where they are on a certain scale. You know, is there any support that they need? Is anybody facing homelessness or are they worried about job security or are they trying to get their GED? Well, so, so that's all. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean to catch up, but that's a lot. That, that's a lot. In and of itself, that's a lot. So I guess I, I have a couple of questions here. Yeah. Um, do you have so are these individuals in question that are helping these facilities? Uh, are there? Do you have folks that are that are there on a daily basis? I mean, does this a, is this a weekly thing? Is it a daily thing? I mean, how do you go about assessing um, in the in the total way that you seem yeah. to be assessing these particular uh, agencies in these particular places? That is a great question. And that's actually a key piece of what I do every day is coordinating those services from the staff that we have out to the centers in the community. So when we first um, get a new partner, we'll do an onboarding with them. We'll ask a couple of questions, well, a lot of questions actually, uh, and we'll do an assessment. You know, that assessment goes into the classroom. It goes into uh, their HR tools that they use, what data they collect, what their finances look like. And from that assessment, we'll get kind of a baseline Line of where we need to start mm -hmm. and we'll develop a plan for that center to move forward uh, whatever we see that might be not necessarily deficient but something that we can see needs improvement will help that center to improve in those areas and we also take whatever concerns the directors or owners may have uh, with that when we do that assessment so we can see exactly what they need that that is uh, that that's a pretty comprehensive um, um, a way to to really really insert yourself in 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 the, in the community. You know, as I was saying, and for those of you who are just joining us, um, we're speaking with Candace Tate. She's the program director of a program through Porter Leith called Next Memphis. Now, you know, have, having said all that, I, I guess I need to ask. How many of these uh, daycare, uh, these these day the day home centers, are you affiliated with now? How many are you partnering with now, and is are you looking to expand that? I love it. So we currently have 22 community child care centers that we partner with, okay. and we have 15 family day homes. Mm -hmm. And we do do our recruitment in the spring. So we are looking to expand. Uh, we're looking to add about um, 15 to 20 more community child care centers, as well as another uh, 10 family day homes in the upcoming by September, August. We're looking to have a whole new set onboarded uh, to join to join in to the next Memphis partnership. Do you have enough uh, folks um, if you're going to extend it that many more in, in addition to what you already have? Uh, do you have the, the staff and, and, and the folks to be able to continue the level of, of, of care and attention that you are, uh, are dealing with already? That excellent question. So right now, no, but what we do every year as we grow, we hire on. So we know that coming up by September, like I said, we're going to have our new partners in place. So that starting in the summer, we'll start recruiting and hiring for the staff that we need to expand. So as our partners, partnerships expand in the community, so does our staff. That's a, that's pretty impressive, actually. And, you know, as I was, I was I was sitting here thinking about it, you know, there's been a lot of conversation and I'm sure you guys, because of what you do at the fine work of the folks at, at Porter Leith, uh, what you do on a daily basis uh, to start to formulate these young minds, you know, the preschool, uh, the daycare, the day homes and things like that. Talk about just how critically important it is uh, to be able to start at, at such a young age and, um, you know, how important it is for these facilities to be able to have this type of, I guess, mentoring and coaching from an organization like yours. It is critically important, especially here in Shelby County, that uh, we even, under the Porter Leaf umbrella, we have a cornerstone program as well as a parents as teachers program that helps mothers to be their child's first teacher. So it starts with the mother, it starts with the parents to getting their child to be able to, you know, learn to read, learn their letters, learn their numbers. So it, it's critically important. I love that we actually have our own early Head Start centers uh, across the city. And then we move into the, the early Head Start piece, which goes past that two years old. So we all know that those kids' brains are developing really, really fast. And there's so much that they learn early on that starts to shape them. And over time, um, the studies have shown that by third grade, the readings levels, they start to fall. So what we hope to come in and do is kind of 
not only work with the students, but work with the teachers to help to enforce and instill um, the learning and tools. And then, like I said, our family support staffs work with the families to reinforce those educational uh, bound, uh, structures at home. So you're working with uh, not only working with teachers and the instructors, you also have a component where you all actually work with the families themselves, because this is, I mean, obviously, you know, the children have to go home to their families to be able to continue, I would imagine, uh, the learning uh, that has, um, it's, it's just, it, it's just beginning uh, in terms of these centers, am I correct? Absolutely. Yes, sir. It, it starts in the center, but we got to take it back home because if, if they're not continuing to learn at home, uh, it's going to fall off and lag a little bit. And one of the stories that I like so much is from our one of our instructional coaches, you know, they tell the parents that it could be as easy as as you're driving uh, to the school or to the store with your child in the car, you know, look at the wheels on that car. What are they? Is it a circle or is it a square? You know, what mm -hmm. color is that bus? Mm -hmm. It's as easy as picking up is these things just as you're driving down the street to have those small conversations and they make a big difference over time. Always teaching, you know, no matter whether you're in school or you're, or you're out of school, and you just gave some some very valuable tips and very easy things for for a parent to to, to do with their children. I mean, even as like you say, driving to the store, or driving you know the grandma's house or whatever, to be able to maybe have them notice you know certain things, and that is all a part of the the learning you know component. Um, and 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 that's uh, I mean to me that's that that that's really where it all starts. I think a lot of people sometimes. You know, um, and there's always been a debate about this. You know, how early do you start? But I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it sounds like you guys are starting pretty, pretty early. early. And you're going to take it up to, did you, did you say take it up to at least third grade? Is that, did, did I so, hear you say that earlier? Or? So we we focus up until uh, five years old in the majority of our okay, centers. kindergarten. But right. those, yeah, but those uh, reading levels, they show that if, you know, you get a good foundation up to third grade, if they, you know, continue to excel, then they will be superior and efficient through, you uh, their high school years. So before I let you go, can you uh, uh, kind of let us know or let the audience know uh, if they want to know more about Next Memphis and want to learn how Next Memphis can possibly help them? Uh, give us the information, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. So if you go to the portaleaf.org website, you will see more information about Next Memphis. Um, and there is one clarity I want to make that, again, we do work directly with child care centers and family day homes. We've had a lot of families uh, directly reach out to us asking about the, the support that we provide, but it goes through the center. So if their child is in a road in a center that is uh, a partner with Next Memphis, then they can receive all the services and benefits that we offer. So the portaleave.org website will have the information. They can go to the Next Memphis page. Part of that is under construction, but they can send us an email. Uh, if any directors or child care owners are interested in forming a partnership, we will have some informational meetings coming up in the spring, and we can definitely reach out to them and get them involved parents reaching out directly to you all about what it is that you're doing means that you're doing something right. right. <laughs> and it is obviously getting the attention of those who need it the most. Candace Tate, thank you so much for taking some time to uh, come on the show Absolutely. and speak to us about Next Memphis. And, uh, you know, you're welcome back anytime that you have some programs or some initiatives or some signups or whatever it is that Next Memphis is doing. Congratulations uh, on your success and I uh, wish you nothing but the best in the rest of 2022. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. I appreciate you. Absolutely that. Ladies and gentlemen, Candace Tate from uh, Next Memphis, uh, which is a hub of uh, Porter Leaf, the Porter Leaf Foundation. And if you've been in Memphis any length of time, you know the fine work that Porter Leaf does with our families and our children. Very, very uh, informative uh, interview there. Thank you so much, Candace. We're going to take our second break. And when we come back, we're going to continue the theme of training young minds. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip. You know who you are. I think you should, you know who you are anyway. We're going to take this. <laughs> you never know. You, you just never know. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Mr. Courtney? Yes, sir. How are you? Man, I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. That was an amazing interview. I'm like, let me call next Memphis. At the, they, what, see, we're going to plug that as soon as we, so we're in commercial break right now. When, they come, when we come back, it's going to be you and me. So we're going to plug that as soon as we come back, okay? Come on, Absolutely. give us a call. Give us All right, a call. Stand, stand by, man, stand by. Experience. Thank you again, so Chip. Have a good say, night. Go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. It's real talk. It's real talk. It's real talk. It's real talk. 
The Brooks is open in Overton Park, home to Memphis Art Collection since 1916. The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art holds the largest collection of world art in the region, with more than 10,000 works spanning 5,000 years of art and cultures. Remember, every Wednesday is free and open until 8 p.m. They are a proud sponsor of WYXR. For more information about the museum and their exhibitions, visit brooksmuseum.org. You belong at the Brooks. Rust College is now accepting applications for the fall 2022 semester. For more information, visit rustcollege.edu or contact admissions at 662-252-8000, extension 4043. Rust College, where tomorrow's leaders are students today. The stuff that WYXR brings to the airwaves is already playing in the parking lots and basements where the next generation's journey is just getting started. And we can't imagine building the brands we do without the role music played in our lives. No matter what kind of art you make, music is what sets you on your path. Loaded for Bear is proud to support WYXR and community radio everywhere. WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And yes, indeed. Welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday. See, I gave you about a minute and a half just in, just in case you were confused about who you are. And now you're you're educated and you're informed and everything else. And speaking of that, uh, my next guest is uh, part of an, a group and an organization that uh, basically trains young minds to train younger minds. And I would delve into that in just a minute. Uh, college age children, not college age young people rather to teach our high school folks and mentor them as well. Now, Courtney, I see that, 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 that nice, uh, you know, smooth picture, you know, you can, if you, if you want us to, everybody to be able to see on Facebook live, you're more than welcome to hit that, that, that button. But if not, I understand completely. And I will say to you, welcome to Real Talk Memphis. Well, I am happy to be here. If I could get this lighting situation figured out, I will definitely come on live by the time all of this, uh, by the time all of this ends. Very good, my friend. Very, very good. And again, very happy to have you. And, uh, you know, there's always a nice test. Look, look at that. If look, look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. He is, he has decided to join us live tonight. Hey, Courtney said before uh, he came on that he really enjoyed the uh, first interview we did with Candace. So, 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 so you like that next Memphis thing, uh, do you? Oh, next, that next Memphis piece is critical. Um, and it's always great when organizations work alongside other organizations right. Right. doing work to help power them. But if, if more people are involved in what next Memphis is doing, more young people, then by the time we get those young people in our program, they would have a great foundation. So I think that's great. Amen to that. So let's talk a little bit about the Peer Power Foundation. Uh, you have a pretty nice uh, setup and in terms of what you're trying to do once again to help uh, educate uh, and get these young minds ready uh, to be the future leaders, uh, not only here, but who knows where in terms of the fact that you are working with college age students, training them, teaching them to prepare them to be able to teach and mentor uh, some of these high school students. Tell us a little bit about the Peer Power Foundation, if you will. So Peer Power Foundation is uh, almost 18 years old now. And what we do is we uh, help to provide public school students with a private school education. Okay. And we do that by hiring high performing college students and putting them inside of classrooms, uh, in public schools classrooms during the day so that we could collapse the student to teacher ratio from one to 30 to one to about 10. So just to talk a little bit more about that, in public schools, there are about 30, 35 students in one class. Right. And no one person 
can meet the individual needs of 30, 35 students. And okay. so um, we, we have some after school programming, but what we realize as peer power is that during the day is the time where we could impact the lives of students who may not be available to come to Saturday school or may not be available for after school program. So having said that, how many, how many tutors do you uh, all provide? Is it per class, per school? I mean, how, how, what's the breakdown there? So we try, to, we try to take that ratio down to one to 10. So if a teacher has 30 students, we try to give her two more, uh, him or her two more uh, adults to be in that classroom with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, you know, class sizes do vary, uh, but we try, we try to collapse that student to teacher ratio by at least half. So uh, and 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 doing by doing so, you obviously take, like you said, um, an increased burden off of of the teacher, uh, but also um, offering um, some some real quality time uh, in a in a in a much smaller group setting. But more importantly to me, what's important about all this is that these are college age students working with high school students. So there really isn't much of a gap there between you know the high school and the college thereby increasing the, the I would say, the familiarity you know, in, in terms of, of, of that. Talk a little bit about that. You know, you know, a lot of times there's curriculum that is provided by the state, provided by the school district, provided by whomever it's provided by. So yeah. that curriculum oftentimes is not sensitive to the culture that our students live. Uh, mm -hmm. where, where our students live. Mm -hmm. Having a college age student right there in that class, it allows that young person, that high school student to receive content with examples, with anecdotes, with metaphors that they can identify with. And, and let me just give an example of that. Sure. Um, curriculum may say, what is the distance between point A and point B? Mm -hmm. And point A may be, uh, uh, maybe Antarctica <laughs> in Asia. Okay. Well, if you got students who are from the hood who don't even take vacations, and sometimes uh, we've had students who have not left their neighborhood. They live in Memphis and they have not even seen the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. When you're giving them an example or calling them uh, to digest a math problem and the example is not culturally sensitive, then you're missing that student um, because they're, they're not going to be receptive to that information because it just, it, it's nothing that they can identify with. Having a college student right there with them that knows pop culture, that knows the Memphis area, it allows that young person to hear real time examples, pop culture, hip hop culture, rap culture, that college student is, is able to make that information relevant in a way that a teacher who may be 20 years older than that student doesn't even have time <laughs> to, to know the pop culture like that college student does. So there's a there's a, there's a definite relatability on, on several levels. And if you're just joining us, we are speaking with Courtney Richardson from the Peer Power Foundation. Uh, he is one of their marketing uh, uh, folks out there. And uh, really uh, interesting to talk about the dynamics um, of education today and how you know many of our kids respond uh, to different stimuli in different ways. And so that what you just said a minute ago about the relatability, um, not only uh, in the proximity of age, but also in, in, in maybe what a teacher is, is talking about, that college student maybe can break that down into more easily digestible terms? That is, that is exactly correct. And let me tell you another thing that having that college student in that classroom does. Okay. It shows that high school student that they can go to college. Okay. It shows them that anything is possible. It shows them that you can come from, and as I say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of the hood? Absolutely. And having a college student that is from North Memphis, that graduated from the same high school you graduated from, who, who succeeded past the same set of circumstances that you are 
faced with now. Having that high school student, that, that college student there in the classroom with that high school student shows them that whatever you're going through right now, you can get over it, you can get through it, and you can get to the next level in your life. Anything is possible is basically what you're saying. And I, I checked out your website and you have some very um, impressive statistics of the number of students that you you all have mentored and taught and 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 talk a little bit about the, just 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 so people understand you've been around 18 years, but uh, talk about the success rate of the program. So uh, it is inevitably uh, if peer power is inside of a school, we see an increase in attendance rates. We see an increase in, uh, if we're in geometry classes, we see a double digit increase, double digit gains. Um, and in the world of academics, there's this thing called growth and mastery. Mm -hmm. uh, we see double digit growth and we see more students in those classes where we have success coaches, um, more of those students in those classes uh, reach the level of proficiency or mastery. Uh, we have uh, ACT Prep University and our average score increase, point increase for ACT Prep University is 3.4 points. So now let me say the maximum amount of points that a student can get on an ACT is 36, right? Right. right. That's about the young person that has a 17 on the ACT and is really only a few points away from a qualifying score mm -hmm. that would allow them to receive the Hope Lottery Scholarship and then qualify for other scholarships. That student with that 17 can come to our program, get, a, get three additional points, four additional points on uh, uh, for their ACT, and now they qualify for scholarships. They qualify for monies. You know, and as I say to, as I say to parents, your student may get their first refund check in college instead of having to wait until they go uh, and get a job and have to pay taxes themselves, which when a student gets a refund check in college, a college student gets a refund check, that is money that the mama does not have to come out of the pocket to pay for books. And there are other expenses that, um, that just hit you all at once while you're in college, but that young person having that qualifying score when they attend our ACT Prep University, which is a proven program, it helps to set people up for, for their future. Courtney, how many schools are you all in now? We are currently in nine high schools and one middle school. Okay, okay. Are, are, you, are you looking to expand on that uh, uh, before the year is out or just incrementally uh, in terms of the number of schools that you are actually uh, involved with? Not before the year, not before the academic year is out uh, mm -hmm. per se, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But each academic year, we uh, have expanded into two additional high schools. Okay. Uh, so it just depends right now. I heard the young lady uh, just before me, uh, you asked her if she has all the volunteers that she needs. And she was like, no, but as they expand, they need more people. And so we uh, are always recruiting for more college students, hiring more college students to go inside of our classrooms, uh, be a part of our program uh, to be tutors and mentors. But we're, we're, we're potentially going to expand into two additional high schools. But there's a new, um, and I'm calling it new, but we're in the process of launching an initiative where we not only hire college students to tutor those students who are in high school, but we are about to hire high school students who will then tutor and mentor on the middle school and elementary level. That's, 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 that's big time. Listen, before I let you go, uh, anybody who wants to uh, learn more about what it is you do or be a part of it, uh, please give us the information. If you want to learn more about what uh, Peer Power Foundation does, you can uh, visit our website at peerpowerfoundation.org. Uh, you can send us an email at info at peerpowerfoundation.org as well. Uh, or you can meet, uh, uh, reach me directly on my uh, office phone at 
one one and and lastly if you look us up on all social media sites and platforms we are peer power foundation or peer power uh, 901 and we are always looking for folks in the community who would like to support this work uh monthly donors uh, we are a nonprofit organization that runs uh off of uh of private donations Courtney Richardson, thank you so much, man, for coming on the show. And uh, you, get, you, you got me fired up tonight. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping that you got some, some of our listeners fired up as well. Thank you for the work that you do with uh, Peer Power Foundation. And you're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much. I would love to come back. Appreciate it, man. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Yeah. Courtney Richardson, ladies and gentlemen, Peer Power Foundation. They are doing some big things to help these young minds develop into great people, great leaders uh, in the future. So we commend them and uh, really, really, really glad to have him on the show to talk a little bit about that organization. We're going to take our final break. And when we're going to come back, when we come back, we are going to shift gears completely. Lights, camera, action. It's all about film and television. We're going to get into all of that with Lynn Sittler. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip. We'll be right back. If you like real talk, here's a way you. Hey, Lynn, how you doing? Hey, well, you're really high energy. I, if I had time, I'd go in there and make a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lynn. Well, listen, we are we're in commercial break. When we come back, it's going to be you and me. Okay, so just stand by. <laughs> okay, sounds All good. Right. All right, thanks. <laughs> All right, take that. Experiences like concerts, live score film screenings, record release parties, weekly music pop-ups, and so much more. For more information, visit crosstownconcourse.com slash visit. The Brooks is open in Overton Park, home to Memphis art collection since 1916. The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art holds the largest collection of world art in the region with more than 10,000 works spanning 5,000 years of art and cultures. Remember, every Wednesday is free and open until 8 p.m. They are a proud sponsor of WYXR. For more information about the museum and their exhibitions, visit brooksmuseum.org. You belong at the Brooks. Russ College is now accepting applications for the fall 2022 semester. Located in Holly Springs, Mississippi, and just minutes away from Memphis, Russ College offers degree programs in business, education, math, science, and much more. Call 662-252-8000, extension 4043 for more details. Russ College hosts its Spring High School Preview Day, February 16, 2022. For more information, it's on our website at russcollege.edu. Russ College, where tomorrow's leaders are students today. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. Chip here. And, you know, I was thinking during the commercial break, there's nothing more exciting than, you know, driving around the city or depending on where you are out and about and, and seeing, uh, you know, film crews and TV crews and production crews uh, shooting various projects uh, here in the city. And so it got me to thinking, well, you know, what can we expect in 2022? Memphis is no stranger when it comes to, you know, being on the big screen or the little screen. And so I decided I would reach out to the commissioner, Lynn Sittler. She is the commissioner of the Memphis and Shelby County Television and Film Commission. And Lynn, thanks for coming on the show and Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, Chip. I'm glad to be here. And it's Absolutely. a great show. I've been listening. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, you know, uh, talk to us about, uh, you know, uh, our city and our county and, uh, you know, what we can expect. And I do have a question to ask you before you get into that. There's a there's a series on right now called Women in the Movement uh, that uh, ABC is uh, doing right now. It's uh, about uh, Emmett Till and, and his mother. 
Did they not film some of that here in Memphis? Am I yes. correct in that? Yes, they did. And actually, that that's the first project I was going to talk about. Okay. Uh, we actually had the chance to have the whole thing shoot here, except maybe a little bit in Mississippi, but Mississippi played fair and square, and they just came up with more incentive money than our state did. But Sharon O'Gwen and I had already found every location in the script. Oh my. And uh, so I was just, we even had a scout during COVID. And with these hands, I packed the the coolers for the COVID safe <laughs> snacks, but, but um, you know, it was fair and square, but we didn't get it. Unfortunately, the state couldn't come up with the same incentive money, but we did get some of it. And yeah. the, the central station never looked better. Yeah. That was that and main street. That was incredible how they transformed main street. And then um, this week, You'll see the last two episodes Thursday night, starting at seven. And I believe the first episode will feature Emmett Till's funeral. Okay. Uh huh. And that was shot here. Okay. 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 I mean, you know, you, you, you mentioned it a second ago, and I want to delve a little bit into that. The challenges um, of, of being able to get some of these production uh, companies and these big outfits to come down there, here and shoot in our fair city. Uh, uh, kind of lay out some of the challenges that are involved in all of that. Well, it was totally different when I first took this job. You had to, uh, there was no talk of incentives. Uh, maybe the mayors would give free police or let them have a free building, you know, that belonged to the government, but no, no millions and millions of dollars like today. Mm -hmm. It was all then more of an aesthetic decision um, and a subjective decision where if they liked the, the photos that we had sent them of the locations and the scripts, then they would come here to scout and then I mean, I'm not bragging, but everything depended on how things went on the on the scout. And if they liked the film commission, uh, namely uh, Sharon and me, um, if they liked the city, I'd always take them to meet the mayors. And and they, you know, were always very extraordinarily welcoming. Mm -hmm. But there was no talk. It wasn't didn't hinge on incentives today. And ever since about 2000 everything has hinged on incentives. They could be going to a city that they hate, that, you know, that where the, the film commission was not as nice as we are. And, <laughs> and they're stuck there because they offer such good incentives. Now we do have hope that the um, new incentive that the state is offering, it's, it's stronger because it doesn't depend on legislation. Okay. Um, you know, before it was like, oh, well, let's go there and get the Shelby County delegation and some others to vote on X number of dollars for this big project that was going to mean X number of jobs for the city. Mm -hmm. But now um, it's a tax um, a tax credit and uh, also a tax exemption. And it's for companies. It's for companies. It's a little complicated for companies like Discovery that own HBO mm -hmm. and the parent company Discovery is, is based in Tennessee and has a huge tax liability. If HBO, which belongs to Discovery, shoots in Tennessee, then they get a tax credit that they give back to the parent company. So mm -hmm. I think we're gonna see a lot of HBO. And we're gonna see more of NBC Universal because Comcast has a big tax liability here. Wow, that that that's uh that that's all that that's that's complicated stuff. I'm glad we have somebody smart like you <laughs> got in charge of all of this. Oh no, no this. I uh, I have to really study it. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, yeah, there's, there's there's a lot to all of this, but but I guess um, it was easier um, before just trying to get them to like me. <laughs> well, you're a very likable person, Lynn. There's no doubt about that. But 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 listen, big big these big productions do mean big uh, money for, for, for cities and, and counties. And of course, uh, you know, a big economic boon in terms of hiring folks and a lot of things like that. Am I correct? Yes, the hotels, the food, the it, just the construction bills uh, alone, uh, the groceries, uh, the location fees. Um, 
the drivers, most people think, oh, you know, that, you know, they, they, sp they were giving money to Hollywood. No, the biggest payroll when you get a big project in is the drivers and the carpenters. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, the people that build the sets and things like that. Yeah. I can, I can, I, I can imagine that before I let you go, we got anything on the horizon. Uh, we'll I guess you can give us a sneak peek into uh, 2022 and beyond. Well, we have things going on right now that, are, that have shot, have been clients that are coming up. Um, Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America is, okay. is made by a fella. And that wasn't a big budget. We, we help projects all the time that aren't big budget. Um, this one is very culturally important and it's by, it's directed, written by a fella who actually lived in Memphis. As a matter of fact, Sharon O'Gwen's family, the Fox family is featured in the story as, as a Memphis family who helped help combat the racism that Jeffrey's family faced when he was growing up here in Memphis. Okay. And Sharon's there as a little baby, wow. but, uh, and, you know, she's the deputy director and the, and the project specialist. And then we just had a film, The Scent of Linden, that'll be showing up uh, at a premiere in Memphis late in the year. And it's actually about the Bulgarian community in Memphis. And mm -hmm. we have huge, huge, uh, huge budget commercial um, for Pfizer that's going to go on the air in February. So it's, it's there's a whole lot that was shot in 2021 that we're going to get to see in 2022. And yes, there is a secret project that we're trying to recruit. And, and I cannot, I cannot All tell right. why I can't say what it is, but it's an exciting project. Well, we, we're going to let you hold on to it. And, uh, but, but, but right before it comes out, you're going to have to come back on the show to, to, to give us the sneak peekies to exactly what's going to happen when all the I's are dotted and the T is crossed. You promise? Yes, I promise. I promise. And I've enjoyed listening tonight and being on your show. This is great, Chip. Thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate you coming on and you are welcome anytime. We love to talk about the entertainment scene uh, here in Memphis and Chevy County. And thank you for the work that you do as commissioner. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for the work you've always done. Thank you. I so, so, I so appreciate that. You take care of yourself. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Well, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, another great show tonight. Uh, fun, uh, filled with uh, some great information. Uh, and I hope you all learned something. And as Lola plays us out tonight, uh, I always uh, want to... Uh, never be neglectful in thanking you, uh, the listener, uh, for supporting this uh, project. And uh, play us out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and by the way, Lola, this is this is her first time on the on on the board tonight. Production, but she has done an amazing job, masterful job. Kudos, kudos, congratulations, congratulations. Yeah, take your bow, take your if bow. If you like real talk, here's a no, way you no, can no, get no, involved. No, 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 Do you have a show that. topic idea the or suggestion? That's not the outfit. Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send ship a message. There we go. There we go. But anyway, <laughs> see, this is what happens when you talk too quick. But anyway, now she did a great job today, and I thank her very, very much. And thanks, Jack, for, for guiding her through it. And uh, I thank you for uh, listening to us. If you're checking us out on Facebook Live, please do. And if you want to be a guest star, guest star, a guest on this radio show, uh, reach out. Check me out, man. This is a good show. And we get good guests on this show. Uh, but I thank you all uh, again. And uh, if Lord says so, we'll be back here next week, same time, same station. And we'll try to do it just a little bit better. But for Nicole... Lola and Jack. I'm Chip. And we're out.